Well, hello, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. Our next trolley stop is here, and our next trolley stop is now. Welcome back to another all new episode of PR from the Hearts Children's Book Spotlight Series. To be precise, we have reached episode number 155. That is the 155th trolley stop here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series and PR from the Heart. My name is John Massalonis with PR from the Heart. I am super excited because it is one of my favorite times of the year where little ones get excited as well too. And I know that parents can get excited or maybe bummed depending upon what side of the aisle that you're on. It's the back to school season here at PR from the Heart. Raise your hand if you are excited about the back to school season. We are totally excited about the back to school season here at PR from the Heart. And we look forward to be sharing some wonderful and brand new heartfelt children's books over the course of the coming weeks ahead to be able to get your little ones even more excited as they head back to school. Now, today here this week on the Children's Book Spotlight series, we're gonna be connecting to little one's curiosity because that's one of the things that really make our little ones so special when they have the childlike wonder and the curiosity as well too. Curiosity is part of a child's emotional and learning development as well too. And I remember growing up and you might be wondering, well, John, why do you have the yellow shining star to start off this week's episode of the Children's Book Spotlight series? Well, I go back to when I was a young lad on my end of things. And I remember playing with Tonka trucks and those things were so awesome. I know that they helped me with my motor skills and, and so much more beyond the scope of that. So if your little one loves trucks, then boy, do we have a special surprise for you here today on episode number 155 of the Children's Book Spotlight Series. Leave it to a brand new children's book to be able to help us as parents and caregivers and custodians of little ones to be able to connect with our little one's curiosity, to help them remember that it's it's a wonderful experience to learn new things. And yes, that there's so many different kinds of trucks. There's not just the dump trucks, there's the garbage trucks and the recycling trucks and the tow trucks. But I'm not gonna list all the trucks because our featured guest here in the children's book Spotlight series inspired by her little son is going to be doing that for us today. So we encourage all of you, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course our fellow shining stars to head on over to amazon.com and purchase your copy of Ethan's Truck Learning Adventures. It is now available. If indeed you feel guided to do so, you can leave a five-star review. For our featured guest here, see Jordan on episode number 155 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. It's one of the many ways that you can pledge your support for her to let her know that she is doing wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books and those who love trucks as well too. I know that my inner child is super excited for episode number 155 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. You can also stay connected with her via her official website. We'll be mentioning this throughout the course of our conversation in our trolley stop today. You can head on over to authorcjordan.com. The trolley travels across the country. The trolley is going to be racking up some mileage as we head out from San Diego, California, across the country, to the beautiful city of Tampa, Florida. Joining us is our featured guest here on episode number 155 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. C. Jordan, thank you for spending some time with us here in our neighborhood. See how are things with you today? I'm doing well. and Thank you for inviting me and having me on. I really appreciate it. Oh, our pleasure. This is, I, I'm so excited that we have the opportunities here at PR from the Heart to be able to share your wonderful story and this message because, you know, when little ones go to the toy store and they say, Mom, Dad, there's there's the truck. It there's There's so many adventures that little ones can take when they connect with trucks as well, too. But before we talk about your book, before we talk about how amazing trucks are and, you know, how how these these wonderful toys can help little ones in so many ways, we always like to be able to start off our children's book spotlight series episodes by having the author that joins us to be able to share their their story. In essence, what brought them into the kid lit arena, so to speak. Um, your little one has inspired this work that you're doing for the children. Could you share this a little bit more about when you knew in your mind and in your heart that you knew that you wanted to be a children's author and also how this particular book Ethan's Truck Learning Adventures came to be? Well, I don't think I ever knew I wanted to be an author. Um, 
I've thought about writing books since I was a young high schooler. Um, I had an English teacher that she actually asked us to write a little short story and that kind of opened my imagination into storytelling and stuff like that. So that's when it started. Um, and throughout the years, I kind of wrote little stories here and there, finished finish some, didn't finish some. But once I had my child, um, my little boy, as you mentioned, uh, he's five now, not four. Um, it got me back into trying to storytell because he's very curious, very hyperactive. He's always asking questions. And um, I always try to find very unique ways of teaching him, answering his questions, but also teaching him a lesson mm. um, in the process. Um, so that's how the book came about because he's always asking me. He's very curious as he's, and he loves trucks and all kinds of trucks. So he's always asked and he likes to play this little game with me that says, mommy, what truck is this? And he just wants me to say what truck, the name of the truck um, all the time. So that's what inspired me to do the book. That's wonderful. When <laughs> when you knew that this story had to be released, whenever little ones, uh, whenever parents have a little one and, and they bring them into the world, um, children can serve as the best audience for your children's book, whether it be the, the, the editor, proofreader, uh, promoter, you know, look at my mommy, she wrote this wonderful children's book, that kind of thing. When, when you were communicating with your son, Ethan, and you were letting him know that this was actually going to happen, I'm curious, could, could you share with us a little bit about his response? Because this is a matter of like, I, I can only imagine for you as a mom, bringing this book into the world it was like sharing those precious and treasured moments that you had with him and inspiring parents to be able to do that in their own way through their love of trucks well he likes looking at the pictures um that was his initial reaction um but he's like any other kid when they like it they like to look at things and learn things, but they prefer to learn things from other people, ver like their teachers versus their parents. Um, so I showed him the book. He looked at it. I read it to him. It was fine. But he goes to preschool and I took it to his preschool and the teacher read it. And um, he was all he was very proud at that point. <laughs> and then she, Mom, mommy, mommy wrote this book and told me I had to write another book. Um, I was actually very surprised that the kids actually liked the book and they keep on requesting to read the book because I didn't expect all this from the book. Um, but yeah, that was his initial reaction. His initial reaction was just to say, oh, it's my mommy, <laughs> nothing. But then as soon as you see it in preschool, he sees other kids liking the book and he's a different story. I can only imagine that. And, you know, your your son is spot on. These these illustrations, they're so colorful and vibrant. And, I, you know, as little ones, um, a lot of the times they don't necessarily have the largest attention span. And we say this respectfully to our little ones. You know, mm -hmm. you, you might get like a little glimmer of a second kind of thing. So if you have something very colorful and vibrant, we're going to be sharing more about the illustrations and, of course, the different kinds of trucks as well, too. Um, we all navigate through the human experience, see. So whenever we're doing something for the first time in our lives, whether it be we're becoming a parent for the first time, whether we're opening up a business for the first time, whether we're writing our first children's book, we can experience some anxieties and some fears and some uh, some obstacles, some some problems, stressors, troubles, worries, you name it. All those things kind of have the same wavelength, so to speak. So um, when this particular book, when you knew that you wanted to share, you've obviously written other books in addition to other activity books as well too, but throughout your author journey, especially with the creation of this book, what were some of the specific challenges that you feel that you have experienced along the way? And what were some of the things that helped you to move through those challenges and difficulties to get through to the other side? Well, some of the difficulties was trying to find the time to actually write the book. That's one of them. Um, in between my son's schedule, or my personal schedule. Um, putting the book together, it went pretty uh, smooth for the most part. It was just figuring out the 
on the publishing process for me, mostly because it's the first time me publishing uh, a children's storybook and finding the illustrator was a process. That, um, I had to figure out where am I gonna find an illustrator because I never had to find an illustrator before um, for the for a children's book. So that, those were some of my obstacles. I was able to overcome them um, by, um, I joined some author groups and they gave, gave me advice. They also suggested things and I just um, tried to communicate with other authors and illustrators to get um, a little bit of their knowledge and advice. And they kind of like guided me through most of the process and that's how the book came about. That's awesome. And I, I feel that, you know, especially when we're, we're doing our part to learn new things, that's one of the, one of the themes of Ethan's mm -hmm. truck learning adventures. It's okay to ask for help because the only way that we're going to be able to not only learn these new things, but to be able to become more skilled and versed and to be able to sharpen and hone our craft, so to speak, is when we have those people who are, you know, a little bit more skilled and more knowledgeable than us who can pass along their, their words of wisdom and also their support as well too. And we appreciate all of you for supporting our little ones during the back to school season and for your support of PR from the heart as we enter the back to school season here at the Children's Book Spot Light series joining us again as our featured guest on episode number 155 of the program C Jordan we are about ready to dive into the pages of her brand new heartful children's book Ethan's truck learning adventures you can head on over to amazon.com if that's your preferred online vehicle of your choosing or to C's official website authorcjordan.com you can leave a five-star review if on Amazon of course if you feel guided to do so that's one of the many ways that you can pledge your support for C to let her know that she's doing wonderful and much needed work for children parents families, educators, those who love great children's books, and of course, for all of you who love trucks as well too, not only for your little ones, but for the inner child within all of us. Because, you know, I still remember a lot of times growing up, see like, you know, is it, it can be an older preconceived notion that if you like trucks, you have to be a boy. But obviously this, you know, you know, even though this, this book is, you know, is about your son and, and his, and his adventures with trucks, uh, th there's so many um, young women's little girls out there that can be able to connect with trucks as well too, especially I know that um, out here in San Diego where I live, it's a very big recycling community. We're always recycling out here in yeah. California, right? So, you know, you, you, this, this particular book, you know, bridges the gap so that both, you know, little boys and little girls can obviously uh, enjoy this book as well, which I really, uh, I, I think it's so wonderful that you're, that you're communicating this as well too. Uh, without, without giving away the whole kitten caboodle, so to speak, of Ethan's truck learning adventures, one of the things that I really love about the story is, is that it's not just like, here's the fire truck, here's the dump truck. You, you really do your part to be able to communicate about why each truck is important and why each truck is special. So it's not just like, again, we talked about little ones having shorter attention spans. We could be like, look, there's the fire truck and look, there's the dump truck and look, there's the monster truck. But you have the, you, you, you kind of dive deeper a little bit as well too. Could you share with our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course our fellow shining stars, uh, some of the, the joy and the magic and the adventures that parents and little ones will be able to enjoy when they read Ethan's Truck Learning Adventures. Well, the whole goal of the, of the book was to um, teach him about different types of trucks, but also teach him about different types of careers um, just to broaden their horizon. I don't, I didn't want to do a book that it was just, oh, this is a truck and that's it. <laughs> um, I wanted to be, to explore little things because my, my, my own child is very curious and he likes to um, explore. And his way of exploring is using his imagination, pretending he's on different trucks. It could be different planes. It could be playing, um, playing house, playing, being an astronaut, which is what he's into now. Um, but that's just the way he, he learns. And not every child um, just learns just by people telling them um, what the truck is. They need to see a visual 
they're very visual learners and that was very important for me. I, um, I wanted to show in my book that um, it's okay if you're a visual learner, you're still able to read a book and get into a book and um, make it a, make it um, very easy for them to read. We had talked so, about that. It's, it, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a story I feel that, Len, thank you for communicating this. It, it's a story that little ones can enjoy in a quick sitting or they can always go back to, they can go back to it, you know, maybe once, you know, two, three times a day. It's also a book that's even kind of like a perfect bedtime story, or especially for all the teachers that are leading the little ones, you know, back to school. Sometimes you get that little five minute break, five minute, 10 minute break before you go back and you do something else. This is the perfect story where it's like little ones are able to uh, learn so much, have colorful illustrations, but again, in a relatively short, period and point in time. And I think so you're really doing your part to be able to hit some of those marks and do it very efficiently, which is awesome as well, too. Um, as I had mentioned growing up, I know that I was very big on Tonka trucks. And just, you know, when you walk into any kind of toy store, there's, as you said, there's so many different kinds of trucks that there are out there. Um, I actually, leading into our children's book spotlight series, uh, I did some research on why toy trucks help kids, not just from the aesthetic purpose of, wow, look, mommy, I have something really cool. There is actually research that has been done that shows the fact that playing with these sorts of things, such as trucks, it helps little ones. From what you've seen in terms of your experience with your own little one, with little ones that you've been sharing your book with as well, too, what are some of the big takeaways in terms of how you feel that trucks help little ones to be able to connect with their imagination, their curiosity, their motor skills. Could you kind of unpack that a little bit more for us as to why you feel that toy trucks especially are really beneficial for kids at this point in time? I think toy trucks are very beneficial for the kids because it opens their imagination to all different kinds of of fields and employment fields. And um, you could pretty much find a truck anywhere in the world doing all kinds of different things. So it's not just because they see one type of truck in their community and um, the occupation for that truck is to say the recycling guy um, that does a recycling truck. That's not the only occupation that deals with those types of trucks and stuff like that. So. Um, in other communities, they might use the trucks different ways. They might use it for construction and um, biggers, all kinds of different ways. So I wanted to make sure that um, uh, they, the kids knew that there's, it's not just because it's this type of truck, um, this is the only occupation that you can have using this truck or anything like that. And it does help. It just opens their mind to all different types of fields of occupation and all different types of trucks and what you can do, and what you cannot do. I thought that was um, very important. And I, cause not every kid is exposed to that. That's very true. That's very true. And, and I feel that one of the things that you're also communicating is the fact this is a great conversation starter. A lot of times when we share children's books, I always get goosebumps when I use the phrase conversation starter because it's children's books are, are, are so helpful, but when we can connect with our little ones on an even deeper level, it's a matter of like they can learn so much even more so. So as I mentioned, it's not just a book about here's the dump truck, here's the recycling truck, here's the uh, here's the tractor, here's the monster truck. It's a matter of, you know, little one, would you like to learn more about monster trucks? Would you like to learn more about recycling trucks? So there's like so many different layers and it's very easy, you know, you know, some kids again, like I know with me, I, I think with, with me, I, there was, I had the, um, my big one was the uh, <clears throat> was the cement mixer, the Tonka cement mixer, mm -hmm. right? So little ones may have their go-to truck, but there's so many different kinds. So one of the things as well about, you know, little ones, they always ask questions, right? You've probably seen that with your son as well too. So mm -hmm. this can just create this, this compact book 
of yours can create not only this great conversation, but answer the questions that little ones have. So when they're out and about, when they're driving, uh, when, when, when their mom or dad or their grandma or grandpa are driving and they see the dump truck on the road or they see the recycling truck on the road, they can kind of make that that further connection. Like, mommy, you, you know, you remember how last week we read in, in C's children's book about dump trucks? Well, there is one right there. So uh, again, this is just one of the things that I'm very passionate about talking about this C because I feel that children's books, they go s so much more than surface level. Right, so even something like, you know, learning about different kinds of trucks, there's so many different layers in the process as well too. One of the things that we always love to do here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series is provide some useful and supportive tips and tools and strategies for parents, for grandparents, for caregivers, and for educators. And especially, let's be honest, around the back to school season, parents can use a little bit of extra help. Right, parents can use the help, educators can use the help. So, they're obviously when little ones are learning new things, right? There can not only be a lot of questions, but they can, you know, little ones can have some sensitive nervous systems. They can get very, uh, they can take on a lot of energy, so to speak. So, what are some words of encouragement and support that you would like to pass along to parents and also to teachers? who are helping to inspire little ones to learn new things, but might be feeling overwhelmed at this point in time. Be patient. Mm. That would be the number one because they will try your nerves. Um, you have to be patient. They will ask a lot of questions. Um, kids, I know my, my child is going through the why stage. Everything is why. <laughs> And it's, uh, sometimes it, it could it could be tough to um, keep a cool head and be patient, but patience would be my advice. Be patient and try to find creative ways to um, teach him things. It could be like, you find something that they like, like my son likes trucks. So I take trucks and the trucks could go to different countries. And that's how I expand his horizons. Um, that's a simple way that a teacher or a parent could use um, to expand their little one's horizons and teach them about different cultures and different things by taking things that they like and just just little chunks of other other material that you would like them to learn um not too much because their their attention span is very short mm -hmm. <laughs> so you want to keep it short but just keep on adding a little bit at a time every single time you tell them the story or you play with them if your little kid likes um likes you to play with them i know my son likes me to play with it play with him and his trucks and his Legos and all, all his toys. Um, and, and that's how you, that's how they learn. And well, most kids learn and it just takes time. Just be patient and take, and it takes time. Every kid learns at a different level. You have to find what works for your, for each child. And um, it, it takes time to learn that. I really appreciate uh, the care and the consideration that you're sharing in that statement um, because, again, it's very easy. Over the past two years, parents have gone through so much. I'm not, I'm not blessed it to be a parent on mine of things, but you know, the, the parents that are in my life, whether it be, you know, parents had to homeschool their kids during the pandemic, so they had to balance that with their careers. And then, you know, the little ones are obviously asking questions like, "When is the pandemic going to be over, mommy and daddy?" Right. So there was just so much. Uh, stress that parents and educators, especially the educators that had to shift from going from in-person learning, like learning was always in-person, but then we distinguished it where there's the virtual, uh, the virtual online learning as well too. So now that we're starting to get back to really, this is the first back to school season in three years where it's like there's more normalcy than beforehand kind of thing. 
You're absolutely right. Patience is key. We're beginning to wind down our time with our featured guest here on episode number 155 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. Author C. Jordan is joining us. We are enjoying her brand new children's book, Ethan's Truck Learning Adventures. It is now available. You can head on over to her official website, authorcjordan.com. You can also head on over to amazon.com if that's your preferred online vehicle of your choosing. While there, of course, you can also check out some of the other wonderful activity books that C is brought to life for children, for parents, and for families, and for educators in the process. You can leave a five-star review for Ethan's Truck Learning Adventures. If you feel guided to do so, as that is one of the many ways you can pledge your support for C to let her know that she is doing wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, for those who love great children's books, and yes, for those who love toy trucks as well too. Um, one of the things that I really uh, appreciate about your message, and it's really like a calling card of this book, is, is that you're reminding little ones through your work and through specifically Ethan's Truck Learning Adventures, how really children have the power to transport themselves to different places, to different times, and they can simply do that with their curiosity and their imagination. They don't have to leave the house or leave the apartment. They can, you know, when they go outside, if they're in their bedroom, there's so many different ways how they can connect to their curiosity and their imagination. Um, another, uh, as some more support, I guess, because we're giving a lot of support to parents and educators for the back to school season. What are a, a few specific, simple ways that you feel that parents and educators can help to foster and to cultivate the curiosity and imagination of our children? What are some simple things that come to mind to be able to help little ones uh, expand their curiosity and their imagination even more? I think a simple way is just taking them to different types of events. Uh, it could be um, state fairs. I have like different types of different types of stands that has to do with like different cultures. It could even be the food festival where you explore different types of food Mm. for different countries and and you also get to learn their um their culture um i know that's one of our favorite ways to expose our son um just by taking different different types of food fairs and um different cultures <laughs> and if you live in a big city you're blessed because you us usually big cities have different little pockets of the Chinese Chinatown, Italy town, um, and so you could do if you live in a big city, you could just go take a day, take a day trip, just go to that part of town and go down the strips, to go down the strip and go into the stores, and you you will see all different kinds of things that you normally wouldn't be exposed to if you didn't go to that part of town, and that's how you could teach your your little one um, a little bit about that culture and they usually have their annual new year's fair i know I'm, i i grew up in philadelphia so we we have chinatown they always had the new year's chi the chinese new year's correct yes uh, parade so that would be somewhere i would take my child to um during the Chinese New Year so he could see the dragon and see, and even amusement parks. Uh, a lot of amusement parks um, celebrate different cultures and have different, um, different times of the year where they host different shows and stuff like that regarding different cultures. So that's, a, that's the easy way to expose your child to different things. I think it's very important to expose them to all kinds of cultures. I, I, I'm really glad that you shared that as well, too, because especially one of the things I know that um, it, it's so important, I feel, because you, you're inspiring me to, to, to kind of share this even more so, is, is that it's important to let our little ones just be themselves, mm -hmm. right? Little ones know what they're doing especially when it comes to sharing and expressing their curiosity and their imagination. And, you know, sometimes um, 
I know that, and, and there's, there's some parents who kind of want to live vicariously through their children, right? So, you know, like parents will try to kind of mold their little one to be someone and change them to who they, who they aren't, so to speak. So when it comes to your curiosity and the, to the, to your little one's curiosity and imagination, just allow them to be themselves and to inspire them. You're really, you're really um, communicating this as well too, to be able to inspire your little ones to be themselves because the more courage and confidence and belief that they have in themselves, they know that their curiosity and their imagination can take them anywhere in the process. And you're also making me very hungry as well, too, see, because I know that one of, my, one of my favorite festivals when I lived out in, in Buffalo, uh, I was introduced to uh, the Lebanese culture. So there was the, so the mm -hmm. Lebanese festival was big in Buffalo. And I remember when I moved out to San Diego two years ago, I'm like, all right. There has to be a Lebanese festival, but I, it's not like the Italian festival. Like most cities probably have an mm -hmm. Italian festival. So I'm like, all right, show me where there's going to be a Lebanese festival. And lo and behold, there is a Lebanese festival in the month of September right here in San Diego. And I'm going to be yeah. there to be able to continue to explore my curiosity, imagination, and just allow myself to connect mm -hmm. with the Lebanese culture even more as well too um everything in life uh is an experience it's a teacher we learn each and every day one of the favorite uh one of my favorite phrases that i was introduced to a little over 10 years ago was the term earth school so a lot of times as adults we can think when we're done with college or we're done with grad school or for those who get like their phd like that's when school is done and until the day we pass away we learn every day so one of my favorite questions to always ask guests who join us here on the Children's Book Spotlight series, you undoubtedly learn a lot through creating, writing, publishing, now sharing Ethan's truck learning adventures. What has this experience, what has Ethan's truck learning adventures taught you about yourself? And what has it taught you about life? What taught me about myself is that I could actually write a book. <laughs> I mean, it's very simple. I um, uh, and actually um, continue to learn. Like you said, learning is an everyday experience, and you should never lose that curiosity. In my view, um, it could be good. It, it, it could be very good for your life and it's good to explore different things. A lot of times whenever we're, we feel called to do something, we can have our inner critic, right? That can say, you're not qualified to do this, sir. You know, you shouldn't be doing this, you know? And like, we can even be hard on ourselves. We can beat ourselves up. There's that little inner voice. I always would, would call it the inner tape recorder. And it might say, you're dumb you're stupid, you're not qualified, you can't do this. And it's a matter of, as you mentioned, like whenever we try something new, we have to do our part to be patient with our inner critic, soothe our inner critic, because then we can get to the point, as you said, you knew in your heart, you, you had mentioned that as a child, you had two goals. You wanted to be a dancer and to maybe write a book one day. Mm -hmm. And it obviously, you know, took the necessary time that it did, but that's so great and you know it's it's really important it also sounds like you're communicating to enjoy the process because many times like if you remember uh like growing up we had vcrs and now we have dvd players uh and we we have the digital platforms to stream our mm -hmm. content right now but there is the fast forward button and the whole point of the fast forward button it's it, it's kind of like you know let's say uh we want to get to the good part of the movie right? You, mm -hmm. It's important to enjoy the whole process of the movie because if we just want to get to the end, it's kind of like, you know, um, before the new superhero, before the new Marvel movie comes out, it's like, mm -hmm. what's going to happen? It defeats the whole purpose. And I remember uh, one of the reasons why I have this here in my office, one of my favorite movies is The Wizard of Oz, the mm -hmm. legendary classic mm -hmm. that's been around for like probably a hundred years or so, or mm -hmm. close to it. Um, and in the back here, there's Dorothy, the Tin Man, the Scarecrow, the Cowardly Lion, and Toto, Toto too, of course. Mm -hmm. And it says, it's not the destination, but the journey that matters most. And mm -hmm. when you're able to appreciate, like this is one of the things about, you know, sharing these sorts of messages, 
Uh, it really is about the process. It's not just about the end destination, even though the end destination is pretty cool because again, here in my hand, I have a copy of Ethan's truck learning adventures in the process. Um, the two ways that we love to close out each children's book spotlight series, we always like to give a little tip of the cap to one of our favorite neighbors, the beloved Mr. Rogers, the host of the long running children's television program, Mr. Mm -hmm. Rogers Neighborhood. And he, very big source of inspiration for us here at PR from the heart. Um, Fred, <laughs> that's so awesome. I, I love it. Mr. Rogers to Mr. Rogers. Um, he always communicated in different ways, whether it be through the neighborhood, whether it be when he did uh, various talks and college commencement speeches, most notably before he, uh, he passed away from stomach cancer when he received his Lifetime Achievement Award at the Daytime Emmys. He always kept the time, whether it be 15 seconds, 30 seconds, or a full minute. And he encouraged all of us to remember those who helped love us into being. And I always get chills talking about this as well too, because that was his way of saying, remember those people that have come into our lives that have helped us, who have supported us. When maybe our inner critic was very loud and those people reminded us like, hey, see, hey, John, like you have what it takes to do this that you're loved, that you're special, that you're amazing just the way that you are. So who would be some of the people that you would like to publicly recognize here on episode number 155 of the Children's Book Spotlight series that helped love you see Jordan into being? Well, my mom, <laughs> um, she always encouraged me. My husband, he's very patient with me. And, um, and like you, I watched TV growing up. I watched Mr. Rogers, which was really, uh, I love watching that. And I also used to watch Reading Rainbow, mm. which a lot of people, um, I don't know if a lot of people nowadays know about Reading Rainbow. I know they know about the, the guy who hosted the Reading Rainbow. Right. But those were two big shows for me when I grew up um, that I used to watch. And inspire me, encourage me and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I, I love that. And, and one of the things when, when Mr. Rogers had also, he also added on by saying is, is that there's people on our path that are near, they live close to us. There's people that have supported us, uh, but they live far away. Maybe on another side of the country, maybe they live in another country. Maybe there's even some of those people that are in heaven that were that were there on our path, but you know, they 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 fulfilled their life's purpose and their and their soul's mission. So they've been back up to heaven. But all of those people, undoubtedly, I always spend a lot of time see focusing on gratitude. And I take the time regularly to express my gratitude and appreciation and my thankfulness for people along the way on my path that I don't even speak to at all anymore that, you know, were, I was connected with when I was in Buffalo, or maybe I, I remember like my, one of my favorite teachers um, uh, growing up was Mrs. Rudick. She was, she was my third grade teacher. I had my, uh, my sixth grade English teacher, Mrs. Anstead. So like all of these people that like, I haven't seen in eons, those were people that helped love me into being as well. So we encourage all of you, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course, our fellow shining stars to remember those who have helped love you into being. And also a little tip of the cap as well, too. Um, I feel that we have the abilities to bring to form and shape our dreams, our desires, our goals, our ambitions, and we have the abilities to help other people, our fellow neighbors that come into our lives and on our path, fulfill their life's purpose and to help them uh, achieve their goals and to be able to make their heart's desires and their wishes come true, so to speak. So one of my favorite Disney animated classics, I go back to the year 1992, I go back to the genie of the lamp. Of course, we remember the late Robin Williams. We remember Disney's Aladdin, which inspires our closing segment, Three Wishes. Oh. So I do have a trusted genie lamp wherever I go. See, you have done your part for a long period of time to be able to give back, to support, to help uh, children that are in your life, that are in your family, beginning with your little one. You have helped children, parents, families, educators. You've given back to them so much. So it is your time to receive. So you are being given three wishes here on episode number 155 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. What would those three wishes be? 
Um, I would say my first wish would be for peace because I think there's so much turmoil, so much war and all this stuff going on in the world right now. Um, I just want everybody to get along, be peaceful, live in this earth peacefully. Um, that would be my first wish. Um, uh, my second wish would be for everybody to have means to support themselves, just, just the basics support of themselves. Um, my wish is for nobody to wake up and have to worry about paying their bills, putting food on the table, supporting their kids and stuff like that. Um, and my third wish would be people to be happy <laughs> it's sort of like intertwined with everything else but um yeah i just want people to feel happy and be and live in a peaceful world when you don't have to worry about things and that's just very important to me well, those are those are very heartfelt wishes see and i'm actually going to add in a fourth wish for you because i can truly tell there is a gift that you have in terms of sharing these kinds of messages with children so i would love to see i would love to see ethan go on many more adventures other than just ethan's truck learning adventures as well so i think that this would this would make for a great series as well um but again we encourage all of you our listeners and viewers our friends and neighbors and of course our fellow shining stars the conversation does not end here we encourage you to continue the conversation and dialogue post children's book spotlight series you can connect with c on instagram and facebook we've included her social media platforms in the description below you can head on over to her official website which is again authorcjordan.com you can head on over to amazon.com leave a five-star review if you feel guided to do so for ethan's truck learning adventures and also enjoy c's other wonderful activity books as well too again if you want to continue to keep the interactivity going with your little ones there's many different choices for you as well too again that's one of the many ways by leaving a five star review for C's work to let her know that she's doing wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and for those who love great children's books. And of course, there are many <clears throat> more magical trolley stops to come as part of PR from the Hearts back to school season here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series. Raise your hand if you have had fun on episode number 155 of the Children's Book Spotlight Series. She's got her hands up, I've got my hands up. We see many hands of the little ones on screen. They look even more excited than usual, by the way. Mission accomplished, job well done. As we had mentioned just a short time ago, there are many more tri magical trolley stops to come here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series. So if you are a children's author and you would like to be able to share your inspiring story, and the release of your brand new children's book, just as C did here this week on the Children's Book Spotlight Series and a future edition of the Children's Book Spotlight Series. We encourage all of you to be able to head on over to our official website at prfromtheheart.com, or you can connect with us via any of our social media platforms that you now see on screen. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at PR from the Heart. We'd like to be able to give three tips of the cap as well, too, as we wind down our time here today. One, of course, one of our favorite neighbors in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, we talked about Mr. Rogers neighborhood a short time ago, one of our favorite neighbors, David Newell. You remember him and you love him as the beloved Mr. McFeely on the long running children's television program, Mr. Rogers neighborhood each and every month. We have been so blessed for the past year and a half to have David Newell join us on PR from the Hearts Neighborly Reviews bookcast as we deliver the heartfelt reviews of the newest heartfelt children's books from the shining stars in the kidlit community here at PR from the heart. So if you are a children's author and would like for David and I to be able to, to deliver a heartfelt review of your brand new children's book on a forthcoming edition of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast, you know where to connect with us via our official website at prfromtheheart.com or any of our social media platforms as well. And of course, we're super excited because the countdown is continuing where we will be traveling from San Diego out to Pittsburgh 
for two in-studio editions of the Neighborly Reviews book has. So David and I will not be the two squares on a screen as we like to call it. We will be back at the Center for Media Innovation in downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for our September and our October book cast. But before that, you might see Ethan's Truck Learning Adventures in a little bit of a more expanded way. That is correct. David and I will be delivering a heartfelt review of Ethan's Truck Learning Adventures as part of the August edition of the Neighborly Reviews book cast as well too. Another tip of the cap to one of our favorite neighbors here in San Diego, Laura Cavanaugh, the host and executive producer of San Diego Living, the official home of Empowering Reads for Kids, which is the official television book review segment here at PR From the Heart on CBS 8, the CW San Diego. So if you were a children's author and would love for Laura and I to be able to share your brand new children's book, on CBS 8, the CW San Diego, on an all new episode of Empowering Reads for Kids so that we can share your message in your book with more children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books here in America's finest city here in San Diego, California. You know where to connect with us. And of course, as well, too, we want to give a little tip of the cap to one of, to some, to several of our favorite neighbors. There's more than one at Unity Church of El Cajon. We are proud to be able to put together and share special episodes of the story time with Mr. John through Unity Church of El Cajon, the Unity of El Cajon story time with Mr. John presented by PR from the heart. And this is just, again, another wonderful way that we can connect and give back to children out here in the San Diego area. So if you would like for me as Mr. John to be able to share and read your brand new children's book on a forthcoming episode of the Unity of El Cajon story time with Mr. John presented by PR from the heart, you know where to connect with us. And of course, we are stepping into our busiest season of the year. Statistically speaking, this is the time of the year where parents and grandparents and educators where they love to purchase brand new children's books and they want to be able to connect with you. So if you are a children's author and would love to be able to see how PR from the heart can support you in your author journey and to share your inspiring story, the release of your brand new children's book through the back to school season, through the holiday season and into 2023, because sooner than we know it, the brand new year is going to be here and many authors are doing their part to already prepare for the year that lies ahead. So for more information on how we can help you to facilitate a book media tour in a city of your choosing, a, a, to facilitate a featured television interview in a city of your choosing, for more information on how we can be of service to you as we celebrate our eight-year anniversary of doing publicity work for children's authors through PR from the heart, you can schedule your courtesy discovery call by heading on over to our official website if you're ready or not there at prfromtheheart.com. And again, let us see how we can be of service to you. One more time, we encourage all of you, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and our fellow shining stars to head on over to amazon.com, to head on over to authorcjordan.com, to purchase your copy of Ethan's Truck Learning Adventures, which by the way, for all educators out there in the Tampa area, in the Philadelphia area, and in cities across the country, if you would like to be able to schedule your very own author school visit with C for the forthcoming back to school season. Again, you can connect with her via her official website, authorcjordan.com, because this is a book that can be shared with all of your little ones as part of the back to school season and beyond. One of the books that truly keeps giving back in the process. As we hear the trolley, that means that it is time to go. So we wanna thank you for your continued support of PR from the heart over the course of these past eight years. Again, it has been such a joy and a privilege and an honor to be of service to all of you through the Children's Book Spotlight series. So we wanna thank you for your continued support of this very program. This fall, we will be celebrating our four year anniversary and without you, there would be no us. So we wanna thank you for your continued support of this program that you are now watching. We wanna thank you for your continued support of Children's Library, of, of local libraries and children's and independent bookstores, truly some of the pillars of our community. And of course, above all else, we wanna thank you for helping us to walk home the children of the world. If this message has inspired you, the message of curiosity, the message of imagination, the messages of why trucks are super cool and super awesome. If the message of Ethan's truck learning adventure, the messages found within C's book have inspired you. We encourage you, if you haven't had the opportunities to do so, to subscribe to PR from the Heart's official YouTube channel and to share this very special trolley stop that has been episode number 155 of the PR from the Heart Children's Book Spotlight series. And one final tip of the cap to one of our favorite neighbors again, we've alluded to him several times previously, Mr. Rogers. He reminded each 
and every one of us every day through the neighborhood in different ways. And he still does this from above. In his own private numerology, he shared the three numbers, one, four, three. That was his way of saying, I love you. There's one letter in I, four letters in love, and three letters in you. He reminded all of us that we're loved and we're special just the way that you are. Well, as a little tip of the cap to Mr. Rogers, and as C was very kind enough to give us some of her free time this week, our favorite three numbers here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series in Pierre from the Heart are two, four, three. There's two letters in we, four letters in love, and three letters in you. That is our reminder that we like you, that we love you just the way that you are, that you are perfect, you are whole, you are healthy, you are complete, that you are loved, that you are special just the way that you are. So again, this has been such a wonderful trolley stop. Thank you for spending some time with us here in our neighborhood as we get started back to school season here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series and PR from the Heart. So again, thank you for your continued support of our little ones. And thank you for helping us to walk home. The children of the world, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. For C. Jordan, for myself, John Masalonis, enjoy the beginning of the back to school season. And we will see all of you once again for another magical trolley stop here at the PR from the Heart Children's Book Spotlight Series. Thank you once again for helping us to walk home the children of the world, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. Goodbye for now.